Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to Super Mario 64. And today, I have another set of unremarkable and odd spaces to show you in this game. I think it's going to be a long one, so rather than lollygag, let's get right into it. Welcome to the first place that I want to show you. This is the Waterfall uh, U.S. National Park System uh, scenic overlook to the left of the castle in the opening area. But before we talk too much about it, let me give you a little more context as to... Uh, where this actually is. So this is the very start of Super Mario 64, which is sort of its own unremarkable and odd place, actually. Maybe we'll stop back here in a moment. But in theory, you start this game, you walk down this path, and of course you go straight to the castle, because that's where all the good stuff is. So this area that we're talking about over to the left, even though it is a physical space, its role is pretty much uh, just to be looked at from a distance. It may as well, there may as well be an invisible wall here, uh, you know, for all intents and purposes. But much like going off of the course in a racing game, you can walk over here and discover uh, something wonderful for yourself, and that is, of course, absolutely nothing. Some places just exist, you know? And this is one of them. I also really like... You can hop over here. Who would have thought? I don't think I've ever stood in this little spot before, this little triangle. And it's interesting because the fence follows the ridge line up until this last bit and then it just suddenly zags inward leaving this tiny uh triangular spot why did they do that you have to wonder you know there was a day in an office in japan where some person was programming super mario 64 and they either they zagged this fence or they created this triangle one or the other most likely they zagged the fence for no reason other than they just felt like it and because of that, we have this tiny little spot. <laughs> Super Mario 64 was not the first 3D game, certainly. It was not even the first true 3D game. I think most people give that title to that one PlayStation 1 game. But I think it's called Jump and Flash. Either way, it was not technically the first true 3D uh, video game title. But one thing that Mario 64 um, unintentionally introduced into video game design lexicon are these places like this, these places that exist and can be visited but won't be visited. Upon the release of Super Mario Galaxy 2 in particular, there was a lot of hubbaloo about how we really wanted, you know, people were like, we got Nintendo should go back to open world Mario. I like to explore. I want to be able to go places and see things. But at the end of the day, what those people didn't realize is what, the way that they usually would play Super Mario 64 would make it to the brain almost indistinguishable from Mario Galaxy. The only difference being what you saw in the distance rather than a bunch of space and stars, a tiny little overlook. Either way, you're not going to it because there's no point. You're going from objective to objective for the most part. Most open world games really aren't. Most open world games are basically Mario Galaxy just with the background swapped for giant cities full of things that you can't do anything with. And I think that's pretty cool. So that is part of why I really like this spot. Now, just for good measure, let's take a moment to stand in the opening area of Mario 64, perhaps the ultimate liminal space. There's no time in the game. You come back here, you pop out of the pipe, and you run into the castle, and that's it. And it's interesting that uh, all the iconic imagery, when you say Super Mario Brothers for the NES, you think of World 1-1, but nobody thinks of this uh, tiny sand pit. When you say Mario 64, you much sooner think of the castle itself. And that, my friends, is what makes this liminal. Liminal meaning uh, intended to be transited, not lingered. And here we are lingering. Anyway, let me show you another place. I've got another good one. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the uh, butt stomp on the pillars and lower the water room in the basement of the castle in Mario 64. Unlike the first place we looked at, this isn't a useless place. You do come here in order to achieve an objective, which is normally this room is filled with water. And if you butt stomp on these pillars, then the water lowers and you unlock some new places. So it's not a useless place, but it is a place that you come to one time and do one thing 
and never come back to again. Which means when you do come back to it, it kind of feels like visiting your old elementary school. Was this room just a dream? Did any of that happen? Of course it did. But the human brain, you know, in hindsight, the human brain is not very good at distinguishing between what actually happened, what was in a dream, what was in Mario 64, versus what was in a Dungeons and Dragons campaign that you played. Memories are relived through the imagination, and the imagination is not, uh, does not really discern in that way. Which I think is part of why video games get so deep in our uh, psychology. It's not very complicated to create an unusual space in a video game, a sort of uh, geometric nightmare prison that is abstract and makes you feel sort of uh, weird and hallucinating, you know, whatever. But the thing that separates this particular room from me is that once you drain the water, they leave the tiniest bit of it in the bottom of this little pit here. And this tiny little bit of water takes this, what otherwise would be just sort of an abstract oddity of a space, and makes it feel like a physical space I'm stepping in. We've drained the water, but some of it has uh, found its way to a low point, cannot be drained, and now is sitting in this environment. There's a third party object, the water, interacting with this ridiculous abstract 3D space. It's a little bit like what we talked about when we did this for Banjo-Kazooie, when there was, uh, Banjo-Kazooie has a lot of small details that make the space feel very physical. Mario 64 has less of those, but this would be one of them. This little rank puddle of mosquito water down in the bottom. And lastly, one very uh, interesting thing about this is when we did one of these for Mario 64 most recently, we talked about there being a room the Hazy Maze Cave Room. This Hazy Maze Cave Room is one of the few actual references to, like, industrial plumbing, you know? And I never knew that when I was a kid. This never struck me as being piping, but it is, which is mind-blowing in my head. So it's funny uh, to come here and to look at the shape of this tunnel, because what this tunnel does is it's, it goes down and then curves back up before leaving. And if you know anything about plumbing, you'll know that there is something called a P-trap, and what the P-trap does is it's a little um, curve. You see them in the bottom of your sinks. And I believe the purpose of the P-trap is to make sure that none of the sewage gases that are in the sewer system can uh, start emanating from the, the piping in your house so your house doesn't just constantly smell like sewage, which is a wonderful invention. Um, but I never noticed this, but this sort of drainage thing, right, where you literally drain the water out of it, is shaped kind of like a gigantic pea trap, which is very interesting. Of course, that's more of like a did you know gaming kind of uh, energy, which is not really what, what my strong suit is, but I thought you might think it was neat. So there you go. This is an excellent room and I encourage anyone to go stand around in it and look at it because it's cool. Welcome everybody to my corner. Based on the music, do you have any guesses what level this is? Well, of course, you know, it's the first level of the game, Bob on Battlefield. And we are standing uh, behind all of this fun war wartime. This is like a, it's a battlefield, right? So this is like Gettysburg for uh, Goombas versus Bob bombs, I guess. I'm not really sure. But anyway, if you go back here behind this uh, red coin rock, and this other weird little rock past this sign, you will find back here a tiny little corner. I love this corner. Um, the reason I love this corner is because it exists only because it must, not because anyone wanted it to. When they make a level like Bob on Battlefield, they are putting things in a giant um, playground for you to play with, right? You've got a cannon and then trees and coins to collect. There's a mountain here you can climb, a floating island, etc. But the nature of a 3D video game, and that really just the nature of like Euclidean geometry space, that's probably not the correct word, but you know, just the nature of how the three-dimensional world functions, is that if two things exist, something has to be in between them. So if your intention is to put a rock here and a rock there, by necessity, this space will be in between them, right? And those spaces in between the objects that a game developer intentionally places are places are really the only place where the video game expresses itself without um, intentional input. Now, it's not literally true, but I think as like, as art goes, nobody, you did not, the, the designers of the level did not 
make this corner, right? The designers of the level made this field and made that big um, hill that's up here and they made uh, this wall, but they didn't make this corner. The corner happened as a result of everything else that was there. And so it's in that way that I mean, this is one of the small places where Super Mario 64 actually exists on its own terms, which is so cool to me. I, I'm not trying to be one of those people that's like, oh, the art of video games is that they're actually art and they're not fun. It's not about fun because it is all about fun and like, you know, everybody loves doing triple jumps and all that. Um, and that's a huge part of the experience. But I, I guess I feel like there's there's so much discourse about that piece of it that we do sort of lose the actual like stand back and let's look at what's happening piece of it. And for me, um, a corner like this really helps me remember why 3D spaces are such an incredible way to make art. Initially, uh, it was my intention to use this space as the unremarkable and odd space for this particular segment, just because it feels like one of those places you do sprint by every time. Like, who uses this cannon and for what? Nobody. What does this sign even say? This is the first time I'm reading it in my entire life. You can grab on the edge of a cliff with your fingertips. That's probably the first actual acknowledgement of Super Mario's fingertips. But when you sort of walk over to this ledge, you see exactly what I'm talking about, right? This is incidental, this area down here. It wasn't an accident, but it was the result of a lot of intentional choices. It was an unintended consequence, which is actually a synonym for an accident. So it sort of is an accident and it's so good. It's such a good little space. However, I do have one more space for you and I have a feeling that it is going to blow your mind in a did you know gaming kind of way. So it's going to be, we're going to get you with unremarkable and odd, but I'm about to hit you with some stuff you never noticed. Let's take one more journey, shall we? Everybody knows that Hazy Maze Cave is meant to be kind of a creepy cave, you know, hence the name, Hazy Maze Cave. Uh, but where I've brought you today is the little room deep inside of Hazy Maze Cave, where you can jump in this black goo and end up in the metal cap stage. Now, we are going to look at that in a moment, but let me just give you some context here. So through this uh, creepy little corridor, if we pop out here, we will end up in this big giant, also creepy and unremarkable and odd. Actually, it is remarkable because of this gigantic dinosaur. It is interesting in this room how there's light coming in from up top, which kind of implies that it's like there's daylight and we're in sort of a giant underground kind of uh, cenote, like a giant flooded well, you know? I've never really thought about that, how like that, the implication there is that that's daytime or some sort of light source. But since there's no electricity in Mario 64, is that true? I mean, there's electricity, but there's no like, like Peach's castle is lit by torches, right? She doesn't have like, there's no LEDs. So yeah, this is probably daytime peeking in through here, which is a weird feeling. Um, we could definitely talk about this room as well, but I don't have, we're not gonna, I don't have time. Go visit it yourself. Um, so through this door, Back through this cavern, we enter a room that, of course, most people, you leap right into that hole because you notice very quickly there's nothing to do in this room. But we're gonna take a moment and just stop. Uh, there's not a lot notable about the room. It is unremarkable in many ways. Um, it is cool that they have in the corners, they rounded out the edges rather than just having it be a square. It's always cool to note when people take a little bit of extra time to just change something, even if it seems arbitrary, because they could have just sailed by it and gone, well, no one, no one really cares. It's just a room. Everyone's going to jump in the hole. But some person said, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really feel right. We should really put some, put some pillars. You know, we should round out these corners for whatever reason, which is cool. And then of course you have the soul bearing liquid of the hazy maze juice down here. So Hazy Maze Cave is, neat, is a neat place and this is a neat room, but what I really need to show you is inside of the Hazy Maze Juice. So let's jump in, shall we? How many times have you been in this room, right? Playing Mario 64, you do your run through, you come in here, get the coins, there's a time limit, you unlock the metal cap, and then you leave. So it is, of course, uh, weird to spend like additional time sitting in this environment and just kind of taking it in. It's another one of those places that if you removed all of the music uh, and just had it be reverberating 
sound effects, it would be a very creepy cave. But here's a little something that I'd never noticed before that has really um, elevated my terror. Look at the walls. What do you see? Do you see the, the unmistakable straight line engineering of human hands? Do you see the familiar and terrifying sub thassalophobia or whatever the hell it's called, of rusted and barnacled metal? Is that what you see when you look at that? Because that's what I see. I see big rusted metal plates. I see a man-carved um, canal through this cave system, out this waterfall, providing water to the castle grounds. It's not like that was just the wall texture they used, right? Come back here. These walls do not look like it. These are, are natural, curved, water-carved uh, textural formations. But there's a clear difference between that texture and this texture. This is a man-made industrial canal, you know, built on the backs of who knows how many toads. People probably died building this canal if it's, if the real canals we built are any indication. If they had a place like this in um, uh, Mario Odyssey, you know there would be like little toad guys with their little toad construction hats being like, we built a canal and we did a great job and nobody died. But this place is completely empty completely abandoned. And it's weird to me that it was sitting in front of my face this whole time. And I've played through this game, you know, countless times, and I never noticed it. These are metal walls, dude, it's crazy. This is an industrial canal. What is going on? It's not, not a canal, it's, I keep saying canal, it's really more of an aqueduct, I guess. Mario 64 is the gift that keeps on giving, which is sort of similar to my YouTube channel. I just keep coming up with great ideas for videos. So if you liked this one, leave a comment saying you did and click another one for me. That helps me out in the algorithm. Thanks so much. I appreciate you watching very much. Enjoy the song I have for you today and I will see you next time. Adios. Amigos.